Thank you, DJ. Um, and thank you guys for coming. This is our first presentation. We do do three of these updates. Uh, one is for our, our instructor trainers, uh, and the rest is just our general membership, which is what this will cover. So we'll talk for instructors and dive masters and so on and so forth. Um, I apologize. We, uh, I haven't had a chance to go through this PowerPoint completely. The one lesson you teach every instructor is never do something new. So uh, I'm going to do that in front of you right now. So, uh, And we, we checked the video, and hopefully that works out for us, too. We do have some things we're going to cover in here, the standard stuff. I'm going to try to get through that. I don't want to run you down with a bunch of standards things. You can find all these resources on our website and our updates, our member updates section. Uh, but I do want to talk a little bit about the product and services because we have added a lot of new things, uh, especially when it comes to social media and services for you guys to try to make your jobs a little easier when registering students and managing the e-learning and those kind of things. So we'll talk about that. Starting with the standards. Uh, just a reminder, make sure you're working on the most current standards. Uh, we put this up there every single time. We do it on every single one of our updates. And every single year, we'll have someone say, that's not what I see in my standards. And when we ask for the revision number at the top of the standards, it's, uh, well, it says 2009. All right. So <laughs> uh, the best bet is to always go to our website. We have the download section for our standards procedures. Just refer back to that. We keep that as up to date as possible. Uh, anything printed that goes out of the, out of the uh, warehouses goes out. As, a, as the most current version with any of the training updates inserted into it. Um, and I talked about this already, but you can find all the quarterly updates in there, in the section in there. Just log in and get access to them, and you can see everything you need. Uh, the most recent one is going to be the medical requirements, which we'll talk about the physical requirements in there. And that's where you can find it on our website. We're always trying to improve this. If you've seen some of the interfaces on the website, changes in the dashboards and things like that. We're trying to make it easier for you guys, figure out what you're clicking on and make those buttons appear the easiest. So uh, if you have any suggestions, bring those to Darren Pace. Or you can give them to DJ, too, um, and just tell us <laughs> what works best for you. Tell them what works best for you. Talk a little bit about our, our three different agencies, starting off with SDI. This is the newest standard change that was in there, which is the, uh, the required materials. We added a new dive master slate that was in there. Whoops, did I go back? Did I go the wrong way? Yeah, the dive master slate was our newest one. Has anybody had a chance to look at that and use it at all? You like it? It worked good for you? OK. Yeah, tried to keep everybody clean and uh, on there, but just trying to get some feedback, figure out how it worked. But that was our newest addition. Dive master slates was something that a lot of people were asking for, so we put one together and, and put it in there. Um, requirements for .NET crossovers. So you can see me trying to read and memorize what I was supposed to practice and rehearse. Uh, just the leadership level crossovers. We're, again, this is another area where we're focusing a lot on trying to ch make some changes in the crossover areas to, one, get the people everything they need to know and, and provide all those services, make it a little more integrated into uh, an online system, and we're going to update that as well so that when you're performing crossovers or someone is going through a crossover, they're getting all the critical information. And then as instructor trainers or IT staffs, uh, what you need to do is really just get in there and answer any questions that weren't answered during that process. So uh, always trying to improve that. We've made some changes on the ERDI side, which I believe we address later on. Um, full face materials, we just put that into the SDI side. Uh, we came out with the full face mask materials earlier this year. And when we did that, we put them under the ERDI side because the vast majority of the certifications were on there. But really, it, we had contemplated branding it with both SDI and TDI, or I'm sorry, SDI and ERDI. But with the contaminated water components that we put into it for the ERDI side, which is really the only difference. Other than that, it works the same exact way. Full face mask works the same way. Uh, but the contamination process just fit better on the ERDI side. So if you are teaching something on the full face mask side on the SDI, then you can, what you can do is just Skip that chapter. Side mount materials, those are out. Anybody using those? Like them? Yeah? We've got some good feedback on those things. We, uh, we did our best to really include a lot of different techniques. It's amazing when you start digging into these courses and, and finding out when you, uh, the differences, uh, like North Florida versus Mexico versus the Europe, and how the cylinders, just the cylinders themselves, are so different that the, the rigging configurations are different. We did our best to try to incorporate a lot of those things in there and, and build it. So 
Uh, again, it's another area if you have feedback, if you're using this and, and there's something that you see, let us know. Uh, we, we always want to find out how the materials are doing and if there's something else that we need to, uh, uh, we need to clean up or something we can add that gives it better value. Uh, <clears throat> this is our instructor, our IT staff. We changed that from a, a prerequisite of staffing an IDC to a certification requirement. So um, the, the instructor, IT staff instructor, or in some cases even an instructor trainer can do the IDC staff post-training. So it's an exit requirement or a pre-certification requirement on those. Um, 25 STI divers. Well, you can read all that stuff. Um, any questions on that? No? I'm not going to read everything on the screen to you. Uh, required skill. So this is the SDI. We, this was an area where the standard was a little bit different. It said staffing an IDC and it now needs to be staffing an SDI uh, IDC before it was generic to any agency. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that got changed. Uh, let's see. These are all ones that we released. This is the uh, first and second quarter, so you should have already seen all these things. Anybody have any questions on? I don't want to read these screens to you, so if you have any questions, is there anything in here that you, anybody had any questions that you saw in the first or second quarter? The previous screens were the ones in the third quarter, which are the ones we just released. We just put those things out. And if you're reading for this for the first time, don't act like it. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 thanks. I remember that one. No questions on it. Um, instructor trainer program, uh, again, we made some changes, minor changes in there, the uh, certifying the 200 divers. And we put some of the, the breakdown of certifications. And what we're really just trying to look for in this program is that our instructor trainers and our IT staffs, instructors coming in, have a, a diverse experience in our programs. So we know they're using our materials, they're familiar with our standards, they've had the opportunity to consult with headquarters if they needed to or a regional office and ask any questions that may have been out there. And that's the reason for changing some of these things. Uh, this was a, a change, members must supply a medical clearance signed by a physician we put out some, uh, changed the language on this slightly. What we're doing for 2017 is we want you to start integrating this in. Medicals are generally good for about 12 months. There are some exceptions. There are some uh, commercial diving ones that are, that are better for more years and things like that. So what we decided to do for 2017 was put it out there as a way for you to start submitting these things to us. And we can put them into your files. And if they carry into 2018, that's great. They are good for 12 months, unless otherwise stated on the medical, from the date of the sign-off. So if you get it to us in 2000, middle of 2017, it's good until the middle of 2018. Um, as of January 1st of 2018, it is going to be a requirement to have the, uh, have the medical sign-offs on these. Yes? One of the things that's asked by one of my co-instructors to find out is, are we utilizing the standard medical form like we use for students? Yes. That's fine. Um, and really the only areas, because we, we do have, you know, we get medical sign-offs from all over the world in these things, and, and all of them are slightly different. The one, there's, a, there's one key area that we look for in any of these things, and we'll accept it as long as it says that there's no restrictions and it does address scuba diving. If it's just a, an athletic type of medical sign-off that has nothing related to scuba diving, it's kind of tough for us to accept that. But um, as long as it has that there's no restrictions, no load-bearing restrictions or anything like that on there, and there is a component of scuba diving or water. I mean, a lot of the commercial, uh, NOAA, AAUS, those kind of things, they do uh, physicals that, that are much more comprehensive than your standard general practitioner. So uh, as long as it has that language in it, then we can accept it. Uh, well, the, the, the actual medical, the standard one doesn't have an expiration date on it, but it's as long, if it doesn't state otherwise, it's good for 12 months. That's a, that's a three-year one, isn't it? Is it five? It's, it's five years or three or four years and it's three years. Okay. Yeah, I knew they had a breakdown. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for whatever's stated on the medical. Um, then it's, it's fine. We'll just have to make sure we build that into our database. We actually have it in the two-date field, so we can put uh, an effective date range in there so we'll know uh, how long it's good for. Hey, I'm discriminated in that age group, too. So. <laughs> I'm with you. 
<laughs> um, yeah, uh, this was just a clarification on the depth ranges for the advanced diver. Let's see, TDI ones. Uh, this was the, I think, the only change that we did in the first, in the third quarter, was the advanced rec uh, change prerequisites to SDI rec diver or TDI cavern diver. Um, again, the reason for this is a lot of times we look at the overhead environment programs as similar. I know rec divers and cave divers don't want to hear that, but um, the the uh, intro to intro to cave is similar to our advanced rec, and the cavern is similar to the SDI uh, introduc introduction to rec, which is limited penetration in the light zone. So um, that's what we're looking at. So it has same basic line drills and things like that, and same basic overhead environment. Um, I know a rec is not a cave, and a cave is not a rec. I got that. Um, but so we just put that language in there, and it allows a little more flexibility for the instructors to be able to accept prerequisites uh, and get more students into the programs if they need them. Uh, dive master slate. This was the slate again. Just added that into the TDI side of it. These again are the first and second quarter updates that were already out there and are already published, and you have access to them. So I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. Uh, again, just. A lot of them are going to be similar. Anytime we change stuff on the leadership level side in any one of our programs, the only exception to this is going to be the ERDI courses, it generally affects TDI and SDI, uh, especially as it relates to crossovers or, or prerequisites and those kind of things. So side mount materials were included in there. Uh, instructor trainer, again, it's going to be very similar. Prerequisite requirements, graduation requirements. Um, the medical we just discussed. Uh, add facility information to the TDI diver registration form. That's just a basic administrative thing that we did there. Any questions on the SDI or the TDI ones? No? You guys good? You bored? You need coffee? <laughs> uh, ERDI, we made no changes. Uh, so that's a good thing. Everything's running pretty well over there. It's, it's doing what it needs to do. Uh, really, right now, we, we're just staying on the ERDI side as long as it's complying with the NFPA, it's complying with with any OSHA, potential OSHA changes that could be out there, uh, everything is good. The one area that we're starting to work on right now is all of our unmanned systems stuff, which are the ROVs, the UAVs. Um, we're probably not going to get anything into the ground robotics type stuff, but um, the rest of it, we are, we are building all those programs too. So if you're into the, in, in, on the ERDI side of our business, uh, definitely look forward to those things. We already have the, um, the Video Ray Pro 4 uh, pilot program out, so uh, we've got a program for that one. Uh, so that was the third quarter. First and second quarters, uh, crossovers again. We did make a change in this one, and um, one of the things we made on the ERDI side of uh, crossovers is that we felt that our instructor base was a really good base. Our instructor trainer base was at a place where we could, uh, we could put a little more requirements in there. Public safety diving, if you're, if you're uh, in it already, I'm not saying this to insult you, but it is a bit of a wild, wild west. There's a lot of different variations of how it's being done and how it's being taught, and we want to standardize that. Uh, we want to standardize it as an industry as a whole, but we're definitely going to start with ourselves. So we want to make sure that the ERDI instructors coming into our program understand the ERDI system. They're not coming in from somewhere else and then just issuing our certification. So uh, our certi our Crossover requirements now are going to be conducted by an instructor trainer. So anybody crossing over to the ERDI side has to go to an ERDI IT in order to gain those ratings. Any questions on that? We handle that side of our business very, very different from the SDI TDI side of things. Full face mask, we talked about that. That's that. Uh, these are now in the optional material section. Um, so really, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at that, go down to the booth and look at the manual that's down there. A great job on the full face mask manual. Um, well, I say that. I should have, all the other materials I said, does anybody have any feedback first? But the, uh, uh, Dart, have you had a chance to look at that one? Or? No? You should go down there and take a peek at it and give me your feedback. But it's a, I think it's a good program. We, we put a lot of work into that one. And again, full face masks are, are a lot like the side mount. There's so many variations and so many different usages for it. And we tried to include all those things in there. Uh, instructor trainer, we already talked about that, it's going to be similar. Again, same on the instructor trainer for the ERDI side. Uh, changes in there, 
These are the swims. Again, just looking at the uh, clarify this one, it is a requirement now. It's no longer um, it's no longer an optional or suggested times on these things. Again, not trying to insult anybody, but uh, the unions got involved in this one. And when we're dealing on the larger departments that are that are union based, when they started going in there and looking at our standards, and it said that it was a suggested time, the unions members filed grievances saying, well, it's just suggested. So that means if it says 16 minutes, I can do it in 30 because it's just a suggestion. So we pulled suggestion out. So that's no longer in the language. That's why we changed that one. A Absolutely. Which, which one's that one? Oh, it's e-learning. Yep. All of our, um, any new materials that we come out with now come out uh, e-learning so they get the full suite of everything, so they can do both. Uh, this was just a ERD2. There was no exam that was in there. That was originally slated a program that we were going to be uh, completely writing and putting everything out for a level two course, and it had an exam and the requirements, and there is no exam for that one. Again, just a change in the supervisor, the CRDI supervisor program. Pulled the language, clarified the language on that one. Non-open water instructor. Does, uh, does everybody understand this program? There's some confusion in the non-open water instructor program. This, this program, so we have two of them that kind of confuse people. There's the non-scuba certification, which this is for, for anybody you want to create as an instructor, if you're an instructor trainer. If you, if you have somebody who's good as a service technician, as a gas blender, as a uh, first aid, you got an EMT paramedic or something like that, but they don't have any intentions of becoming an open water instructor, we have a program for that. On the ERDI side, a lot of people come into this program and they want to teach public safety, but they're not a sport level instructor. So what we did is we put the standards, we combined the standards, and they can take a, a joint program. They can go through and go through the SDI and then straight into the ERDI instructor level program. So when they're finished with the course, it's a longer course, but when they're finished with the course, they can teach open water through public safety. So it's a combined program, and that, that does create a little bit of confusion in there. But it's, uh, it's something that's unique to that side of our business because a lot of these guys come in and they don't have any intentions of teaching open water divers. But we built it into the standard because they have to keep the team healthy and people oftentimes come into the team and they're not even certified divers, so you've got to teach them the basics before you can get them into the public safety side. But what we did is integrate it so that way they're teaching it as a, it's, you know, they get the public safety flavor all the way through. Uh, no, no changes there, and that's, you've already seen all that stuff. What's that? I saw the 800 meter swim That's the mat, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mass wins, yeah. yeah. All right, here's some of the products and services that we had. Uh, navigation, a lot of translations. I, I, I think I've lost count as to how many languages we have the, um, have the, the navigation bars in now. Uh, but there they are, and there's still more coming. And it was, uh, it's a long process to get all these things taken care of. And of course, anytime we make a change to our website, then it has to go out through a full translation again. Anything added new has to be translated in all these different languages. So. We are successful in all these languages. And I can tell you that our product development people, uh, when I go back there and their faces are glazed over, I know they're working on translations because <laughs> they're just doing cut and paste of cells. That's what they do back there. Yeah. So do doing a lot of work on those things. The dive master slates we already talked about uh, on those things. <clears throat> and I'd like your feedback. We'd like your feedback if you get a chance to look at these things or use them in the field, and if there's something else that you feel needs to be added to them. Our biggest, our biggest thing here was to keep them simple, keep them streamlined, and small, so that they, dive masters can carry them with them, instructors can use them as a teaching tool. Yes, Joel? Uh, we have the eight and a half by 11 that we use for the open water, but it doesn't have a, something that's small like that. That would put a third slate in there, because that's front and back right now. Um, yeah. Okay. Digital C cards. Has everybody seen this one? Got a chance to use that? So what we, what we did here is uh, it's included in your registration fee. So you pay a registration fee. The output is up to you. 
You're going to get a certification card if you want a certification card, but you're also going to get a digital card as well. And the way that works, and uh, you can go down to the booth and the guys down there talk a lot more about this and they're much more knowledgeable on it because it does, it does vary. If you're using an iOS system, so if you're using a, uh, an iPhone versus an Android, it will come in different. It will also depend on the speed of the download. If the download is fast, it will come in one way. If it's slow, it'll come in another way. Um, generally, what it's supposed to do is it comes down as a PDF file. If you're using an iOS, iOS system and your download speeds are fast, it gets put into your eBooks. So you can go into your books and see all your certification cards there. Um, but this happens instantaneously. As soon as you, if you're a, a dive store owner, if you're an instructor and you register a student, as soon as they get that email saying that they're registered, they can log into their profile and see their digital C cards right there. It's available to them right away. Joel, I wasn't supposed to hear that. Yeah, we, we have been working on that. There's, um, there's, some, there's some new laws with child privacy stuff that's come out, and that's really the reason why we do that. Uh, we, we feel like, similar to, to Facebook, that we're kind of exempt from that, although online courses do have money. If you look at the original 1998 Act in the US, it was specific to money. It was specific to the commerce of a child giving money through the internet, and that's, that's what they were not allowed to do, and that's what they were trying to protect it from. Now, in my mind, as a parent, I'm like, well, why did that kid have the parent's credit card? <laughs> But that's, that's not the issue. But so we're working on creating either a, like a subordinate profile to the parents so that they could do that uh, or updating it because they have updated the Child Privacy Act and I think it's called Safe Harbors um, is the new act. And it does allow for a minor to create a profile online. Right. creates a conflict. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because that's one of our positive points of ID is that email address. So that's one of the areas where we, we haven't been able to let uh, multiple same e email addresses for various profiles. Um, I don't have a solution for you right now as to what's happening uh, or, or what, what an option is other than to go onto Gmail or go to Yahoo and create a, an email address for them and just a <coughs> simple one with their name or something that nobody can identify. Uh, that would be my only suggestion at this point. That's been our sort of our verbal advice to, to parents who want their kids to take online programs. I mean, I've got two kids in school, and both of them do online stuff all the time, and they create profiles, and they do all these other things. So it's not uncommon, especially on the educational side, for them to be doing that. For whatever reason, uh, because we do have commerce as part of our thing, it, we are subject to the Child Privacy Act. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, my son's underage and he's got an email address and he has a, a profile online for our stuff. That's, that's what I did to get around that one. But our verbal advice is just have the parents sign, do all the sign up work, the profile work, and then let the kids take the online program. So anyways, back to the digital C cards. Um, if you want more information on this, the guys down in the booth can show you how it all works, how it downloads, and uh, you can pull them in there. I think they are working on a feature right now because currently if you have multiple certifications with us, and this applies to you as instructors especially, if you've got multiple specialties, you have to do it one at a time. They're working on a batch download system to where you can just go in there and pull down all your cards at once rather than having to click on each individual one and download it. I know that's one of the suggestions that came up after it was launched. Yes? You can have either or. Yeah. I think what they're doing upstairs in sales, and Brian, you may be able to speak to that, is but can people opt out to not have a plastic card and just get a digital one? If you're printing your own cards at the dive store, uh, yeah, that's always an option. But if they send them in through us, we're still going to print a hard card. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, so for us, it's just a registration fee, and you get both. Right. 
Right, and then you can just log into your profile and show the certification card right there. And it shows the front and the back of the card if you haven't had a chance to look at it. Um, we didn't, you know, there are some other options out there. We were looking at apps and we were looking at all these other things, but uh, the, the apps just seem like, one, they're going away. People are starting to get away from the app process uh, because it is specific to, to devices. It is specific to operating systems. And you do have to have internet access in order to get uh, onto the app and, and gain those things. So uh, we just, we felt like the best way to go was to just turn it into a PDF file or a PNG file. It comes down and it's either one of those two. And then uh, just come and bring it right down to your phone as a file and then you have it right there. It's always available to you, so if you change a device, you, you lose your phone, whatever it is, you can always go back up to your profile. They're always going to be there, and you can download the new ones onto the new device for whatever reason if you need to. Our socks. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say much more than what that screen says. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, they're popular. Um, yeah. There you go. If you want to show our socks off, you can do that. Say that again. Christmas is close, right? You, 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 yeah, you stuff your stockings with stockings. Or <laughs> um, E-learning sign up through your facility. And this is the new codes manager. And I'm going to run a video here, and hopefully uh, it, will, it will play right with us. And then uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'm not as well versed in the codes manager and how it works. I know the basics of it. I was in the testing process of it. Uh, but Brian Shreve is up here who works at headquarters, and he's a little more knowledgeable in it. So if it uh, hopefully won, the video runs smoother than it did the first time we ran it. And uh, also, if you have any questions, just ask Brian or myself, and we'll do the best uh, to answer those. The end goal here was to give all the e-learning access back to you guys. You can manage your codes. You can see who's using them, who's not using them, what you have available to you, what you need to purchase, all that stuff. You can look at all those things. So that's what our goal was here. Let me see if I can get this video to work. Well, it was a little smoother than the first time, but not much. But that is the codes manager, and it is a really nice feature. And actually, the second part of that feature was a suggestion uh, from the membership, because we put that out originally, and all it would do is it would give you all the codes, what was assigned, what was available, and what had been completed. But then in order to give that to somebody, you had to cut it out of the cell and then email it to them. So someone said, well, it's already in there, and we already have the profile. Why don't you just make it available for us to email the code right to the customer from there? 
So the second part of that, where you just click on the code and then say assign it to this user, uh, that was a suggestion that came back from you guys. So thank you. That's the kind of feedback that we need that makes your life a little easier. And it keeps your codes uh, available to you all the time, so you don't even have to contact headquarters now to do those kind of things. You can do it. You can manage it all on your own. Any questions on that? All right. <laughs> um, we have a lot more new promo videos that we're putting out. One of the things that we've made, a, hopefully you've seen this, but you've, uh, in our social media and all of our uh, websites and everything else that we're doing, is we're trying to become a resource for information. And we may put things out there that you're like, why did you even do that? The reason why we do that is we've got some really smart marketing people that sit in there and they scroll through the internet and they say, what are divers searching for? And they come up with some of the craziest questions. And we'll go into a marketing meeting and they say, well, these are the list of articles that we need to write or these are the videos that we have to shoot. And we just look at them like, who, who asked these questions? 30,000 people. <laughs> okay, well, let's create a video for it. So a lot of what you're seeing here is we are trying to create content that users are asking questions of. They want to know, how do I do this? How do I do these fin kicks? I've never seen this stuff done. Um, we write an article on it if it's worth an article, or we go out and we shoot a video on it. And then we become a resource of information uh, that you can either share with your customers or your customers can access through our website. Because we just have it, we're starting to shoot more and more. We hired one guy just recently, and that's his job, is to go out and shoot videos and edit videos and do these kind of things. Because it was getting that, 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 much, that much content was being demanded in a video format that we needed somebody in-house to be able to do that all the time. So now we have the mask videos, because that was a question. How do I clean a mask? How do I select a mask? Um, the fins video, how do you select and, and get fins that work for you? Uh, everything else. I mean, if there's something that you're seeing, and we're always looking for people to contribute stuff, so if, if there's something that you have, a, uh, an article that you want to write, let us know. And we accept articles in. Sometimes we can't use them. Other times we'll just get back to you and say, well, if we can make these changes to it, we can put that out there. Your name goes on it. You get put on a list. I think we have a whole list of things on our website of contributors uh, who, who write articles and stuff for us. So feel free to do that because we're always looking for things. These are some of the videos there. Something new, the logbooks. I think that was just a new cover is all we changed in that one in 2016. Full face mask manual, we already talked about that. And that's a pretty much the suite. So whenever we put out a new course, we do the student manual, knowledge quest, e-learning, instructor guide, and a digital instructor resource. Is anybody not familiar with what comes on the digital instructor resource? It's a PDF version of the instructor guide. It's a PowerPoint presentation. It's all your, the, any forms that may be uh, associated with that course, and the final exams and the answer keys. So th those are broken out into individual files so you can print them and administer them. And that's the dig digital resource. If you are a person who likes a printed guide for you, that, you can get the printed instructor guide and the digital resource, and then you get all the individual files and the PowerPoint presentation if that's something that you want to use. Side mount materials. These are the ones I was saying that, you know, that they're SDI and TDI, so they work best for both of those things. And uh, again, just if you have any feedback on this kind of stuff, let us know. Because we generally try to update materials for uh, new things or any mistakes about every, at the far end, five years. But uh, typically we do it sooner than that if there's something new. Because the equipment lines change and things like that. <clears throat> E-learning codes only. This was a change that we made in 2016. I think towards the beginning of it, we had people who said, well, I, I don't want any of the printed materials. I just want the e-learning codes. So you can purchase just those now. You don't have to get the full kits. They didn't want the zipper bags. They didn't want all those things. It is, yeah. And this was a feature that we launched. The, we started our online chat, or uh, what we call live chat, for our general website section, I believe at the end of last year, beginning of this year. And then we moved it into the e-learning side of it. This has become very popular, and it's an amazing thing. If you have not used it yet, it's pretty amazing to see the interaction from, this, from the, uh, um, the customers coming in and how streamlined the communication is. I think our average time now is at about 12 seconds, 12 to 8 to 12. Um, 
the, the amount of time that when a customer starts the live chat with us, on average, is between 8 and 12 seconds. We can get them taken care of and they can move on. If they are communicating with us on the online training, what we do is we, that, so there's, um, they're called operators and anybody who is logged in there and is an operator has a certain queue that they can be in. If you're an instructor, you can be in the instructor queue, which means that if a student is logged into an online training program and they have a question, the person that they're going to be communicating with is only an instructor. So our sales staff that's upstairs or anybody else who is not a credentialed instructor won't see those chats coming in. And what the instructor is, what we do as instructors when we, so one of those chats comes in is they have a question. And we start helping them with that question. We don't give them the answer because we can see there's a little bar that comes up on our side that tells us exactly where they are in the online learning process. And we can click on that link and we can see the exact page that they're on and the content that they have read. Once we have helped them through the process, if they're associated with a facility or an instructor, which they always are, you will get a transcript of that entire chat. We'll email it to you and say, one of the students who's taken a course with you just had this chat session with us. And you'll be able to see the full transcript of everything that was discussed and what was talked about. That gives you a tool to either address that specific topic that they had or reach out and contact them and say, do you have any other questions? I noticed that you did a chat with headquarters. Um, our expansion of this is to go 24-7. We want to be able to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If a student is online, taking an online training course, they can get in contact with an instructor and ask a question. It's like a technical support line um, to help them through that. That's where we're moving towards. We uh, already have it right now on our, and the, the, the number of chats as this goes up is, is pretty amazing. And it's dive centers too. We get a lot of dive centers to say, look, I'm having a problem, can you help me with this? And we can get them taken care of really quickly. But the communication process is so streamlined because people get right to the point. <laughs> and they just ask the question, we answer them, we send them a link, we send them whatever they need. If it's something that we can't send in a link format, they just, we just ask them for an email and we cut and paste and then send them whatever else they need via email. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> Funny story on this one, we just had a kid who was, I won't take up much more of your time, but we just had a kid who was at school and he was signed up for an open water course and he was harassing our staff in there and just saying he was going to get so-and-so in trouble or who, where's this person or that's what, not what so-and-so said and he kept asking. Well, we, we can see everything down to longitude, latitude of where that is coming in. And so <laughs> we found out where he was at, but we weren't exactly sure where he was at. We knew he was in school. We knew he was part of a school district. Then he made the last mistake. He logged in with his user profile and we knew everything about him. <laughs> and so one of our people, the manager, called, uh, called the grandmother, who was, you talk about the, you know, who signs in for the information, called the grandmother of the uh, child, and she said, I'm going to the school right now. <laughs> we got a written apology with everybody's names on it. I'm very sorry I did this, but he was just going on there and harassing all the people. He would say, can I get transferred to this person, or I'm going to get this person fired, and so, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Some of the things that we add in there, the chat session with an instructor with HQ staff, I already talked about a lot of these things, I got ahead of myself. Um, and then you'll see that, you can also ask if, if a student comes in and says, look, I had this live chat on there and, and they helped me with these things, you can ask us. If for some reason we didn't get a chance to email it to you, you can ask us and we'll send that off to you. Webinars, always trying to put more webinars out there. Um, sales ones, the e-learning, how it's failing the industry. Brian just walked in the room and he's doing that presentation. Uh, he did that presentation. You can see that one. It's already recorded and up there too. Um, the ITWs, another question that we often get. We've got a full website up there, uh, a full portion of our website up there dedicated to the ITs. If you are an instructor trainer, please make sure you go up there and search for the website for the IT incentive program and that helps you with the crossovers. What we tried to do for that one was you as instructor trainers can get in there and uh, log in and conduct the whole crossover and there's an area for you to make money in that process. So the, it's called the IT incentive program and you can find it on the website. And member updates. We do, right now we're at five member updates at the beginning of every quarter and we do four in English and one in Spanish. And then as time moves on, there'll be more languages and more updates and we've got them, we usually publish those things and put them out there so you know the times. We change the times of the day, we change the days of the week, we change everything so try to give multiple options for people to get in there and do that. Some of the new things we have, the uh, shirts, 
like rash guards, yeah, pretty nice. Some new regional offices we add in there, uh, Mexico, Belize, Honduras, Guatemala, uh, takes care of that, it's Pepe, does those things. So he's, not a, he's a regional manager, not a regional office. South America, we added that one in, covering more countries, trying to get languages, countries, time zones, and everything addressed. Uh, so Latin America was a big push for us this year, and it's, it's worked out really well. Argentina. Eastern Europe was a change. We had an office there that, that covered those areas, and now we have new office managers that are there doing a great job. Uh, Benelux. Japan, again, this was a, a new regional manager went in there. We already had one, but we, um, now we have a new one. Really trying to expand our global presence, and this helps out in many ways for not only us, but for you guys for referrals. The greater the brand gets out there, the more regional offices, the more countries covered, the better the brand recognition, the easier the referral process is for you sending students out to those various areas so that you know that they'll be taken care of. And all this information is available on the web. So if you go to our website, you can look at uh, contact us, and you'll see all of our regional offices. If you have a question for them, you can either come to us, or you can go direct to the regional office and ask them the questions. And this is sort of our mantra. Um, if, if we feel like there's a change that needs to happen, uh, similar to what we did with the codes manager and everything else that we're trying to do, the content marketing and everything, we have to be the first ones to make that change. So uh, we're going to make those changes internally and then try to push it even farther, uh, influence the industry, give the benefits to you guys. Because if we, can, if we can make the change and we can make the difference, that benefits us all. And hopefully other people will follow along with it, as long as it was a good change. Um, we talk about this in the instructor trainer program. The, the benefits of this thing, the networking possibilities in these programs, we get there's more and more people coming into staffing our ITWs now just to come in there and, and take the benefits of the networking and connecting with other people. It's not uncommon for us to have five different languages spoken in our, in our program. So the, the networking goes just outside, not just within the US in our programs. We run two of these things um, in, at headquarters, but there's multiple over the year. I mean, this past year, I think we generated close to 100 100 instructor trainers uh, with the various programs. We have one of our evaluators in the room, Mark Powell, did just finish one up in Spain for us. So they're running all over the place, and they're a great opportunity to either become an IT or to get in there and meet other instructor trainers uh, around the globe. We did move. We went from, not far, but uh, we went from Jensen Beach to Stewart, Florida. We now have our own building, and it's a really nice building with a lot of room. We've got a great classroom and everything in there, uh, and things are, things are going along well. So that's our new address. Uh, it's, on, it's been updated on all of our forms. It's updated on the web. If you print anything down in the new forms, you'll see the address on there. So it's, we didn't move that far. Not like going from Maine to Florida, just from one town to the next town. And stop by and see us. We got a, the great thing about being in this location is that we get a lot of visitors coming into headquarters now. Which is, which is nice. We didn't get quite as many visitors when we were in Maine, but I'm not sure why. But, um, website audits. Uh, Darren and DJ are here, so uh, talk to you about that stuff, all the SEO. I'm not even going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about there. But the, um, uh, and then your URL, URLs on your website for the e-learning stuff. If you haven't had a chance to do that as a facility administrator, you can go in there, you can pull a unique URL. If you don't understand what that does for you, um, I'll tell you really quickly. When you put that link on your website, that is an identifier to you. We, and what it does is as soon as that customer clicks on that, if they're on your website and they click on that link, that person is now your customer. It doesn't come back to our website. It stays with you. So you're gonna, when they sign up for an online course, you're going to get notification that that person has signed up with you. you they're going to see your logos on the web pages as they're going through the course. It's your customer. So those unique URLs that are on there, make sure that you copy those things off in your, uh, in your facility uh, section and put them onto your website, and that way that customer is always linked to you. Uh, we talked about the, the articles and stuff. 
if you have the articles and you want to put them up there, we're always trying to push the stuff out on social media and, and get the content out for people to see and just become a resource of information. And Darren is in the back of the room and he can talk much more knowledgeably to that um, if you want to get any kind of depth as to, as to how that benefits you uh, and getting the articles out there, sharing this content and, and all those things. Certainly talk to him about that. And then our videos, we already talked about that quickly, but just a reminder on there, we've got a whole YouTube channel that's got a whole resource of videos. You can use them in the classrooms. You can put them up on looping videos in your stores. You can do all kinds of things with them. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions? No? All right. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of the show, and come down and see us. <laughs>